Now we're into the specific regulations that are contained within the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's uh, new protections uh, that are afforded to borrowers that have mortgages that are federally related. Now, the reality is almost all mortgages are contained within the protections of the CFPB. So if you're a consumer living in the state of Florida and anywhere in the country, frankly, uh, that has a mortgage, uh, the protections of the CFPB uh, apply to you. Now, there are many different stages of protection in here, and as the manual clearly dictates, um, the protections apply uh, at loss mitigation in particular. That's what we'll talk about now. Let's say that you're in foreclosure or you're behind on your mortgage. Now, every consumer that I talk to will tell you stories about sending in applications over and over and over again to the servicers only to be ignored or to be told that they didn't get this paper or that paper or anything else. And so it's undisputed now, but that the industry did a very poor job of working with consumers and trying to do loss mitigation. Well, uh, so a key focus of the uh, Dodd-Frank regulations was to address those very real problems. And what CFPB required the lenders to do was to have a single point of contact and have very robust record keeping and tracking procedures so that when a consumer filled out an application for loss mitigation, um, they were no longer going to be treated to uh, servicers in India or wherever else telling them, we didn't get this form, we didn't get that form. We don't have any record of your calls. So the single point of contact uh, regulations within CFPB requires the lenders to establish one person who can be in control of that consumer's file and to speak intelligently about the documents that have been produced. Now I've got to tell you, I'm, I'm frankly pretty pleased with the way the industry has responded to CFPB and the regulations contained within there. Uh, obviously with our thousands of consumers that we've represented over the years that report bad problems with modification, I have encouraged them, especially since CFPB came into place to go back to the drawing board, start submitting applications all over again, and I can tell you, we've been very pleased with the uh, outcome so far. So again, under Section 1 of CFPB right here, it talks about the modification process, and specifically uh, the requirement of servicers to process that modification application um, with uh, consistency and with accuracy, and they're doing it real well. So this uh, video here that dealt with the modification process um, is the the second step in this uh, process, the third step will be what happens if that modification is denied and you're looking into foreclosure. Um, but, but the reality is this. Um, the consumer is now submitting uh, uh, loss mitigation applications to the servicer consistent with these new, very robust uh, proceedings, and then they're getting good feedback back from the servicer about what documents they received and what documents they're missing, and then they're getting feedback from the servicer about the review process. And, and again, in my experience, uh, the servicers have gotten much better with this. So um, uh, what happens when the modification comes back and it's denied? Well, again, it contained within Section 1 here, of this are very robust appeal process. So even if a consumer gets denied for a modification early on, doesn't mean it's over. You've still got an opportunity to appeal. And at that point in time in particular, it's time to, again, sit down with a professional. Let's look at what's going wrong, collect good information, and provide it back to the servicer. Now, um, in this next video, I'm going to talk about what happens when everything seems to go wrong with the loss mitigation process, and maybe we're looking at a foreclosure sale staring us down the throat. So stay tuned for that video. It's coming up next.